In this lecture, I want to talk about what Flexbox actually is and then give some of the reasons why you may actually want to use Flexbox so that you can see if it's the right choice for you. Now, first of all, Flexbox is not some framework or anything like that. It's a new box model that CSS now supports, so there are no extra dependencies or anything you have in your project. It's just an alternative, so to say, to your display block, display inline or display inline block that you already know of. And you can now actually use display flex to, well, use the new Flexbox box model. Now, the question is, What's the advantage for me? And there are quite a few actually. With Flexbox, you can finally create simple solutions for things that should also be simple, like vertical centering, for example, or like changing the order of elements in a container without actually changing the HTML, the markup. Or also another thing is taking up remaining space, which is also one of the things that people Google all the time. You can find answer by answer on Stack Overflow on this. And it's so easy now with Flexbox. So many of those very typical CSS problems that you run into are now actually easy to solve thanks to Flexbox. And that's really where you can really increase your productivity and also just make your day a lot easier by using Flexbox. Now, some of the examples that I have ready already is, for example, grids with Flexbox, where you can create grids like this or galleries, for example, with each of the items having different widths, like a sixth, a third, a fourth, and so on of the total width that is available. And all the items will just take up all the remaining space that there is. And this is one of the things that's now even more simple with Flexbox and also allows you to have a better responsive behavior of all your elements. Now, another example I have are media objects right down here, where you have an image on the side and then you want to have some description text on, let's say, on the right side, like here. And you don't actually want the text to float around the image. You just want it to stay on the right side, like here, for example. And now with Flexbox, you can solve this also without adding another div here, which contains the image element here. And one div for the right side, you can just have your container element, put your actual elements in here, like the image and a P tag, for example. And then with Flexbox, you can create this layout very easily. And we're gonna go through all of this, of course, in this course. And also this section down here with some real world examples of Flexbox is gonna be extended further once I create more of this course. But for now, I wanna show you two more examples, like for example, the holy gray layout. Now we can talk about this in more detail if you want to, but basically it's a layout where in the markup, actually the content section here comes first. Then you have, for example, a nef or an aside element and another one. So in the markup, the order is actually this one first, and then you have the two sidebars here. But as you can see on the actual side, we have our first sidebar on the left, then the content in the center and another sidebar on the right. And this is something you can do very easily with Flexbox by using a property called order. And we're gonna talk about this later, of course. Now, another criteria for this holy gray layout is that it always fills the whole page, even if the content is not actually that much like here. And also that all the sidebars and the content actually have the same height here no matter what their actual amount of content is. And then also the footer should be a sticky footer that's always on the bottom of the page, even if there's not that much content like here. And you can see in this case, of course, I have the boxes layout as you can see in all my videos here. So you can see where all the boxes are and what their sizes are. But of course it doesn't have to be that way. And then would just look like the footer is down here on the bottom of the page where it belongs, even though the content only goes to, let's say, half of the page. Now, this is something that hasn't actually been possible like this in CSS before we had Flexbox. But we're going to see how you can do this with Flexbox with very little code. Well, actually, the code is uh, the one here on the left that I have opened up here in Sublime Text. But don't get too distracted now. We're going to go through all of this later in the course and, of course, discuss all the details. Now, one more example I want to go through is one that makes gives designers a lot of headache, myself included, which is real vertical centering. Now, you may have tried to do this before and it's really a headache, but now with Flexbox, it's really simple and you can have vertical centering dynamically 
if this container here now would have a different height or anything, it would still be centered perfectly without me doing any changes to the code. And that's also one of the great benefits of Flexbox. And of course, this is a task that should be very, very simple, but unfortunately it hasn't been before. Now, finally, it is simple. So with Flexbox, you actually also make your code more readable and more understandable because you don't have to use as many hacks anymore for simple things like this. Uh, great that we now have this and I think it's going to make you more productive and it's a very important skill to have nowadays. Now in this course, we're going to go through all of these problems, all of these design problems that CSS had before, and we're going to see simple solutions to them. And of course, as I mentioned, we can add more real world examples down here to see more of what Flexbox can actually do. Yeah, so you can just let me know in the Q&A if you want me to add something to the examples or if you have any questions. All right, that's all for this lecture and I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you.